Hi folks, Canadian Prepper here, second video of the day, and it's in the car so you know it's serious. Vladimir Putin has started to move nuclear-capable missiles towards the Finnish border. Seven Iskander missile systems were spotted 24 kilometers, uh, moving in the direction of the Finnish-Russian border. If you are not up to date, you should know that Finland and Sweden have both committed to applying for NATO membership. Currently, that is under review. They're saying it's going to take a little while for that to be ratified. Turkey has taken an issue with it, opposing the bid due to what they claim to be the support of terrorist cells, terrorist organizations, or who they deem to be terrorist organizations uh, on the part of Finland. So they are blocking the bid by the Scandinavian countries to be a part of NATO. Will that stick? Uh, it certainly seems like there's some... Turkey is really at crossroads of this whole thing. They are, on the one hand, supplying the Ukrainians with these drones, which appear to be mildly effective, although they're also being shot down at a, a fairly rapid rate. But they have had some success. So they're supplying, on the one hand, Ukrainians' drones. On one hand, they're buying uh, S-400 missile systems from the Russians. They're also trying to buy F-35 uh, systems from the United States. So they're really trying to play both sides of the fence here. And now, with this uh, potential blocking of Finland and Sweden entering into NATO, we may well see Turkey choose a side in this whole fight. So this was this whole uh, seven Iskander missile systems that were moving towards the border is based on a video that was released on Monday that shows the deployment of these missiles purportedly from a motorway on the way to Vyborg, a western Russian town close to the Finnish border. So what this means is that the nuclear alert level has went from high to extreme. Now we know that the Russians, or we speculate that the Russians already have nuclear weapons in Kaliningrad, which is a exclave of Russia, which is just a satellite, maybe, you know, a few hundred miles outside of the Russian mainland on the Baltic Sea. Now there's speculation that there's already nuclear weapons there. Why wouldn't there be? NATO has all kinds of warships in there, so you can bet that they probably already have nukes there. I think this is more of a power play to put the Finns on notice that Russia is stepping up its nuclear alert level. Uh, the Finns have the capability to mobilize up to 280,000 troops, which is surprising considering the average age of all males in the population is 43 or something to that effect. That means that that's the average, okay? Uh, so for a country of 5 million to be able to mobilize 280,000 troops is fairly substantial. This is concerning for the Russians, who of course currently have about that many troops tied up in the Ukraine debacle. And of course, they have a very large border that they need to defend, so they cannot mobilize that amount of troops on the fly. They can, however, they do have the manpower, mind you, they have 140 million people. So if they were committed to doing some sort of draft and uh, mass conscription, they could easily you know, have millions of soldiers, but outfitting those soldiers, training those soldiers would take a long time. So why not just send some nuclear missiles to do the work of 100,000 soldiers, right? So that is what they're doing. That is what is happening today, guys. Uh, the situation is getting incredibly tense because supposedly seven Americans of the special forces have been killed and one this is based on Russian media now, okay? According to Russian media report that retired U.S. Admiral Eric Thor Olson, who commanded a special forces group, has been captured. Uh, there are allegedly still many foreign fighters hiding out in the Azovstal steel plant, which they've been bombarding with incendiary weapons. They made it rain down. It looked like this... I just watched a video of it. It looked like... Uh, just like a, a raining down of fire. It was, I've never seen anything like that before. It was pretty insane. <sighs> so supposedly uh, seven Americans were killed in Rubizi, and I'm not sure if they were mercenaries. Uh, this was stated by the assistant to the Chechen leader who is on the ground there doing their thing. Um, alongside that, they suspect that there's a British lieutenant colonel as well. 
and other NATO advisors, trainers have surrendered, supposedly. So who knows how many foreign fighters they have as POWs right now that they're going to use as bar bargaining chips. But the more of these uh, foreign fighters who are discovered, of course, raises the stakes and the specter of nuclear war as NATO now starts drills near the Russian border in Estonia. Thousands of troops from 14 nations, including the US, Sweden, Finland, Ukraine, are taking part in huge exercises in Estonia. A large-scale NATO military drill in Estonia on Monday, dubbed, double, or dubbed Hedgehog 2022, is one of the largest in the Baltic nation's history, according to the military bloc. These drills involve more than 15,000 troops from 14 nations. That's very substantial for NATO, who can only, at any given time, on a good day, bring maybe 20,000 troops to bear to fight against uh, the Russians uh, along those border countries. That's the manpower of NATO currently. And a lot of that is U.S. forces. And this is, of course, not counting the forces of those individual countries, all of which... If it really happened, uh, you know, I mean, Russia is just going to start shooting the nukes. What else can they do? Uh, when you think about it, though, 20,000 guys is not that much. I mean, the Ukrainians have had 10 times, if not 20 times the amount of guys. So it, it's not a lot of guys. But of course, uh, they got NATO technology. They have NATO intelligence, NATO weapon systems at their disposal, which makes them uh, which makes that a force multiplier. Right. We also have a word coming out that global wheat prices have now hit a record high. You've seen the video I did this morning. Uh, since that time, uh, the price of wheat has skyrocketed as India has banned exports of food. So if you think that things are bad right now, just wait. Things are going to get a hell of a lot worse. I just wanted to give you guys that update I was going to release another video today, which is a food preservation video, but I think we're going to save that till tomorrow because I don't want to overload people and go and check out our video on the current food crisis, uh, which is sweeping the planet right now as a result of the blockades, the embargoes, the restrictions on exports, the hoarding of food by countries, uh, big stuff going on in Iran. And if it's happening in Iran, a country who is, you know, relatively quite wealthy, uh, you can bet that uh, it's not going to be long before we start to see unrest in many other impoverished countries around the world. I foresee this being a summer of rage, especially when you get the temperatures starting to climb uh, to the apocalyptic levels that they are. That's when hell is just going to break loose. And uh, the hotter it gets, of course, the more energy we need to power our air conditioners. And uh, the more energy we need to do that, that takes energy away from other things, which increases the price of all of the fuels that we rely on. So brace yourself, guys. This is only, this is only the beginning. Uh, be thankful if you've made your preparations and if you're doing that on an ongoing basis because it's never going to be in vain. Nothing that we do as preppers will ever be in vain, even if something, even if nothing ever happens. Uh, if, if all goes well, okay, if the, the odds of which are a jumbo jet being assembled by a tornado, but if all were to go well from this point forward and you never had to use your preps again, if anything, you are fully prepared to go out and enjoy a nice camping trip in the back country with your family or you just have a little bit more food in your pantry. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. What are you hearing in your neck of the woods? I'm getting reports from all over the place, guys, every single day about increased military movements. And I don't know if it's just confirmation bias or what it is, but it seems to be ratcheting up. Let me know what you're seeing in your neck of the woods. Thanks for watching, guys. Stay safe. Canadian Prepper out.